end of her house and um and i think i feel like me i'm blessed in a lot of ways because of the woman you are and i posted that scripture last week is that um, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and i just want to let say, them know I that all say, them singles know <laughs> i just want to say thank you find you a good woman because it can change your life come on can i get an amen oh and then this so it's not up to the pizza delivery person on how good the pizza is. I want you to know that y'all had an amazing cook, and it's God. He's, he's made you some food today, spiritual food. And it's, it's, not a, it's not her responsibility for how good it tastes. But I want you to know you're going to eat good today. Can I get an amen? Come on. Y'all stand to your feet and just help me welcome Pastor Sheridan. Come on. All right, all right, y'all yelled loud for me, but we, let's give it up for God. That's why we're here today. That's who we're celebrating. Y'all can be better than that. Louder for Jesus. He came, he died on the cross for you, and he rose again so that one day you might have eternal life in heaven with him. Amen? You can be seated. I got my tissue. I was like, I'm not going to need a whole lot of tissue today, and then he starts it out like that. So I'm like, it's the rain. It's the rain. I am so proud of you guys for being here today. Can I be really honest? This weather, I was like, man, this is like a really good sit by the fire, lay low, do nothing kind of day. But you guys are here. You guys are ready to receive a word from God. Amen. Anybody ready to hear something? Anybody going through something that they're like, God, I need you to talk to me today. I need you to do what only you can do in my life. And God, I am going to show up and I expect you to meet me where I'm at. Amen. So we've been in a collection of talks called Open Doors. Somebody say Open Doors. What kind of doors? Closed? Open Doors. Somebody, Open Doors. Does anybody need a door open in your life today? Yes. I see you guys. God's going to open your door for you. Whatever it is, whatever you're praying, whatever you're believing for. We've been in this collection and we've talked a lot about open doors and what they look like and how amazing it is when doors are open. But we, what we haven't talked about is hallways. Somebody say hallways. Today we're going to talk about the hallway between open doors. Whenever you walk into a house, whenever you walk through one door, you don't often immediately walk to another door, right? There's a hallway in between doors. So today we're going to talk about hallways. I know for me, whenever I walk through an open door that God has opened for me, I feel a sense of relief or a, a sense of success or achievement. Like, yes, I achieved a goal. You know, a lot of times we, we're like, you know what? If I could just obtain this certain standard, if I could just finish school, I'll be satisfied. If I could just make this amount of money, I, could, I would be satisfied. I would be happy. I would be content. But the reality is a lot of times what happens is we, we achieve that. And then it's not, but like five minutes later, we're like, okay, where's the next thing? Like, what's my next goal? What's my next achievement? What's like, we just skip over that, that one thing that we used to say is whenever I get here, I'll be content. God, whenever I do this, I'll serve you. God, whenever you give me a baby, then I'll serve you. God, whenever you do this, then I'll do that. But the reality is we, reality is we have to serve God through our hallway and through our open doors, not just when it's convenient for us, not just when it feels good, not just when we're on the mountaintop, but also when we're in the valley. Amen. You've probably heard the cliche, there's light at the end of the tunnel or there's light at the end of the hallway. Anybody ever heard that? There's light at the end of the tunnel. Well, to be honest with you, if there's light at the end of the tunnel, that's because there's a hallway or there's a door, I'm sorry, there's a door at the end of the tunnel that is taking you to another place where there's some light shining, right? So it's not just a cliche, there's actually something about it. Can I be super honest? I really pride myself in being transparent with you guys. We want to lead a transparent church. We don't want to hide and beat around the bush per se, but can I just be honest? Are you guys okay with honesty or do we need to sugarcoat for you? Do we need to make you feel good here? Or can we be real? Can we be real? Anybody value realness? I'm going to be the same on the platform as I'm going to be in the street. Unless you mess with my kids. <laughs> That's not a joke. So anyways, um, but a lot of times when we're in a hallway, hallways can be hell. It can be hell. Because they're so hard. Sometimes when we're in a hallway, it's just so dark or it's lonely. Or, you know, you just, you feel, you feel alone. 
like you honestly like physically feel alone sometimes you can't even feel the presence of God in your hallway because really you might just be looking for the next open door instead of looking for God hallways are hard the initial excitement you feel when you walk through an open door is outstanding but once you step into the hallway as you begin looking for that next open door it can be far away you might know in your mind what that next open door is supposed to be but looking around looking everywhere it might be hard to spot it initially i know it's like to me it's almost like a gps so like you're driving in your car and it gives you step by step right one turn at a time just like god he gives you one door at a time and so your gps once you make this one right turn then it automatically updates right if you have a good um, siri or you have a good whoever is guiding you in your car some people have like brazilian accents in their car I'm like how did you change that but whoever is guiding you in your car as soon as you make that that turn that it told you to do it gives you the next update and i know like when we drive to south lake or dallas it's like turn 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 exit 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 and then all of a sudden there's like 90 miles on this one highway sometimes in our life we walk through this open door and then all of a sudden your 90 miles of hallway or your 90 miles your nine years your nine months your nine days can feel like a lifetime to your next turn or your next open door but can i tell you when you're stuck in a hallway it's really nice to know god's voice servant heareth. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And all Israel knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. You can find this teaching in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Write that down. I'm going to come back to it. But there's something about knowing the voice of God in your life, especially when you're walking in a hallway. For a while, my family tried to ban me from vacations. True story. Because it appeared as if every time I came back from a vacation, I was pregnant. Am I right or am I right? There's two options. Every time I came back from a trip, Sheridan's pregnant. Two weeks later, positive pregnancy test. You know, I mean, it's like true story. So, Ava... Hawaii, come back from Hawaii, I'm pregnant. El Cabo, right? Axel Dallas, that was a pastor's conference. A couple years later, or we figured it out, and a couple years later, the XO marriage conference got us with Danny, and we still have no idea how Demi got here. I mean, I have no idea. I'm not really sure I was there. But in 2013, God opened up a door to my womb, and I would have five babies in six years somebody say wow that's what I said I didn't realize it until hindsight you know it's like man you really did have a lot of babies in just a few years from 2013 to 2019 so many babies but I can remember between pregnancies two and three I had to walk a hallway 
Somebody say a hallway. Have you ever been mad at God? Anybody in here? Ever been mad at God? Ever blamed him for something? Maybe a loss of a loved one, just been mad at him. Ever cussed at God? Can we be really honest in here? You ever cussed at God? I see you. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm not the only one. Thank you. You have, okay. Yeah. Being really honest. Well, I have. I've done all those things. I had lost L about two weeks prior to this night. And Ava was 12 months and two weeks uh, 12 months and two weeks old I just put her to bed and Eli was a police officer working night shift for our city and I can remember I was all alone and when Ava would go to sleep and Eli would be at work that's when I would process my loss for those of you that don't know Elle was stillborn it's my second baby she was stillborn and I can remember screaming at God God why why me why my baby Where was I out of your covering? I serve you. I go to church. I serve my church. I tithe. I do all the things. Somebody say, I do all the things. Do you ever feel like you do all the things? So why? I'm not going to cuss in here. But I cussed at him too. I was mad. I was hurt. I'm like, God, why did you let this happen? And I can remember in that moment when I was standing in what I now realize hindsight was a hallway between open doors. I asked God, why did my L not get to stay with me? And he said, remember how you prayed to me every night? And I'm like, yeah. And? He's like, every night you pray, use me. I'm willing. Use me to reach people for you. And he said, I am a God who answers prayers. And I'm going to use you through this. So many people will be touched. And so many people will see me in you. I only am using you because I know that you will lean on me to see you through this. And we would get through this together. Now, God didn't cause the death of my baby, but can I tell you all the things that the devil sends out to attack us, God will turn it around and use it for his glory somehow, some way. I can't tell you how many women I've been able to talk to who have gone through the same thing. Some of them, I can remember, I spoke at a woman's conference two years ago, and this lady came up to me. She was like 85 years old, and she's like, I've had seven miscarriages. And she's like, my husband doesn't know. She's like, I've walked through all of them alone. There are so many people in whatever your brokenness is right now, whatever your brokenness is today, God wants to use you to reach other people. He wants to heal your heart so that he may reach other people through your story. But in that moment, when I heard God say that to me, I felt an extreme sense of peace. The Bible tells us that God will give us peace that surpasses all of our understanding. So even when it doesn't make sense, he'll give you peace. I can remember wiping my tears away and remembering in that moment, God is with me. He never left me. Honestly, he's probably crying with me in that moment. He is comforting me and that he would one day use it for his glory. So remember this, when you're walking through something, Whatever it looks like, when you're walking through something, you're not alone. No matter how alone you feel, you're not alone. You can always call out to God. God understands. He wants to be there for you. He wants to comfort you. The hallway is simply a space between two doors. And maybe you're stuck in a hallway. Maybe you've been waiting for a while for a door to open up. Maybe you're not even seeing any light at the end of your tunnel or at the end of your hallway. Can I challenge you to keep walking? Keep walking. Keep pressing into God. Keep pressing into your church. Keep pressing into your marriage. Don't give up. Whatever it is, don't give up. Keep going. You're getting closer. 
Maybe you're sitting in this room and you're just trying to figure out where you fit in, where you fit in in the church, where you fit in in your job, where you fit in in your, in your family, in your life. But maybe instead of us looking for our next open door, just looking for the next piece of light, we need to be looking for God in our hallway. Maybe he's waiting on you to lean into him so that he can open up a door that no man can ever shut. You know, we have to truly commit to God. We can't be half in. We cannot be half in on God. Maybe you only seek God when you want something from him. You know, a lot of times when things are good in our life, when they're good in our marriage, when they're good in our bank accounts, when everything's good, a lot of people won't come to church then. They're like, I'm good. I don't need God. And then when all hell breaks loose, they're like, you know what? I need God. Let me go back. Let me go back. And then they come back and they get healed. God heals their heart. Heals them. Sets them free of whatever it is they're going through. And then they turn, turn their back again. I challenge you to be truly committed to God. Even when things are good, keep serving Him. Keep loving Him. Keep seeking relationship with Him. You know, I, I know Eli, Pastor Eli mentioned about um, worship team auditions coming up uh, this Saturday. Uh, 9 a.m. I believe here. But, uh, you know, I was thinking, Raina, you'd be surprised how many people in this room can really sing. I'm serious. They can really sing. But they're unwilling to make the commitment to be at the rehearsals, to do all the things that it takes to stand on this platform and worship Jesus and lead people into the, to the presence of God. But they're not scared to ask him for things. And, you know, we wonder why our prayers aren't being answered. But the reality is, we want God to do something for us that we're not even willing to do for Him. All He wants us to do is praise Him, worship Him, give Him what is His. All the praise and the glory is His. So many people want to be half committed to God. They want to be half committed to God. That's like saying, I'm going to be half committed to my husband. I'm going to be half committed to my wife. That don't work. Let me tell you about it. It ain't going to work. It's going to be over. Imagine if your spouse is only half committed to you. Not happening. You have to be fully committed followers of Jesus. One way we show our commitment is through water baptisms. Water baptisms are coming up for the church. Mark your calendar for June 5th. We're going to go under the water for Jesus. It's a way that we show our public declaration, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. June 5th here at the church. You can sign up on the QR code. I want to brag for just a second. Is that okay? Can I brag for a second? I have so many girlfriends in this room that come to church Sunday after Sunday Many of them serve. Many of them bring their children. But they come Sunday after Sunday without their husband. And can I tell you it's not easy? The amount of strength it takes to get up when you see them sleeping or you see them making like a nice breakfast or... It's hard. The strength that it takes to believe that one day they'll come with you. They will. Don't give up. The commitment, you guys, and if you're guys in the room and you're coming without your wife, this is for you too. The commitment that you're giving to God, you're leading your house for Jesus. I know the Bible tells us that the man is the spiritual leader of the home, but when your man isn't rising up and following Jesus, you need to step in and spiritually lead your home until he's ready. To give you some hope today, there was two years of my marriage that I came to church alone. Eli was consumed in work. I brought my babies. I served my heart out in kids' ministry. And um, 
my husband's a pastor of a church now y'all we pastor this church together if God will do it for my marriage if he'll do it for my husband he wants to do it for yours don't give up we might be launching you into your city to launch a church just keep praying keep believing for them I feel like today somebody needs to hear that God is gentle he's gentle I like to say that God is a true gentleman he's going to open doors for you in your life but he's not going to push you through them he's going to open it and he's going to step back and allow you to make your own decision he's going to allow you to choose whether you follow him or you don't He's going to allow you to choose what he ha- the plans he has for you or the plans you have for yourself. He's not forceful. He's going to move at your speed. A true gentleman will move at your speed. He's not pushy. Just like with Adam and Eve, you know, he said, you know what? These are the rules. These are the boundaries. This is what I would like to see happen in your life. This is what I would like to see happen in your life. This is, this is what he's given us to guide our life is the Bible, the word. He gave Adam and Eve one rule, one rule, and they could do whatever else they wanted to do. They didn't even really have to work. They just picked their food. He said, don't eat from that tree. Anything else in the garden, you can have it. But he gave them the freedom to choose. The love of a father is gentle. I thought in honor of the message last Sunday, uh, I didn't get permission permission to show his nipple, so disregard the nipple. I didn't cover it. But the love of a father is gentle. God is, well, God is gentle with you. A lot of times you're not going to for he's not you're not going to feel him on you in a way that's like uncomfortable, but like you'll just feel his presence. He wants to hold you. He wants to comfort you. Can you imagine if it was, you know, I know they did this back in the day, whatever the day is, you can figure out the years of this, but whenever you didn't get to pick your spouse, but it was picked for you and like you're forced to be with this person forever and you're forced to love them. Imagine if that was the case. Thank God we get to choose who we love. We're not forced into a certain marriage. Wouldn't that stink? Like, I mean, at least you get to figure out, like, if you're compatible. God is going to open doors in your life, but being the gentleman he is, he's going to allow you to choose whether you walk through it or not. I want to go back to the video I showed you in the beginning of Samuel and Eli. God was calling out to Samuel. It's 1 Samuel 3, 1. That's where it begins. And Samuel thought that Eli was calling him, but in fact, it was God. When we don't have relationship with someone, we might not recognize their voice. But if we do have relationship with someone and they call out to us, I know like my kids, they can say mama on the phone and I'll know exactly what kid that is. It's because we have relationship. It's because we talk to each other. But if we don't have relationship with them, I'll be like, who dis? Like, y'all say that? No, okay. Like, um, who's this? It's your car extended warranty now? Somebody always calls from a random lot number, you know, and it's like spam. Now that now they're really good at it. But like whenever you don't know them, whenever you hear their voice and you're like, I have no idea who this is. Like they know my name. This is awkward. Like it's really good to know the voice of God because he wants to lead you and he wants to guide you and he wants to tell you things and he wants to speak to you. He wants to be your friend. But if you don't know his voice, you're not going to be listening. You're going to think it's other things, other distractions. You know, often whenever we think of God, we think he is alpha. He's like all man, right? And he's like, just like this macho man. He's aggressive and he is all powerful. And so when we think of him, we think he speaks with like the sound shattering voice and like, you know, like just, uh. but the reality is the Bible actually tells us in 1 Kings 19, 12, it says God speaks in a still small voice. So if you're like in a loud place or you're in a distraction, a distracted place, it's going to be really hard to hear God's voice, especially if you haven't learned the voice of God in your life. 
in John 10 27 it says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me it's gonna be really hard to follow somebody that you don't know his voice I challenge you to to get to know God he wants a relationship with you he doesn't want to use you and abuse you he wants to know you he wants to love you he wants to provide for you he wants to be there for you he wants to comfort you he will never leave you nor forsake you is what the Bible tells us and I truly believe that with all my heart I believe everything in this Bible is true from the beginning to the end Old Testament and New Testament it's all relevant you know he doesn't want it to be a one-way relationship when you only call him when you need something whenever you only pray to him when you're desperate can you imagine ladies in the room little kids cover your ears could you imagine if he only called you when he needed something from you it ain't about to fly we want relationship we want you taking the trash out we want you doing the dishes we want you sweeping the floor don't just call me when you when you want something why he needs to take the trash out right okay no no trash no he wants a two-way relationship with you he is a god that gives and takes away he wants to know you he wants you to know him and some ways to get to know god is to read your bible read your bible the bible is god inspired but it was written by man god spoke to men and they wrote this for us for you today God knew you would be here today he has a purpose and a plan for you another way that we get to know God is simply by praying to him and a lot of times you know growing up in church you don't really realize or maybe you didn't grow up in church and you're coming now a lot of times we think prayer is just praying to God but it's praying to him and then it's allowing a moment for him to speak back to you maybe you pray about a certain situation you're like in Jesus name amen and like then you go doing whatever you're doing you didn't even give him an opportunity to speak to your prayer to speak back to you to give you wisdom and give you guidance and answer a prayer I challenge you the next time you pray take a few moments whether it's 30 seconds or two minutes and just sit there silence turn the TV off turn the radio off Close your eyes if you have to. Don't scroll Facebook while you're doing it. Close your eyes and just say, God, speak to me. Now, you might not hear an audible voice being like, my child. You know, like like we see, thou shalt. You don't have to pray to God and thou shalt. That was, uh, what is that, King James Version, Dad? You don't have to pray in King James. You can just talk to him like I'm talking to you right now. He wants to know you he wants relationship with you it's not to be fake but he wants to speak to you he wants to guide you to your next open door he wants to prepare you in the hallway he wants to be preparing you for what's about to happen when you walk through this next open door he genuinely wants relationship with you he has more for you he has so much more for you but are you willing to pursue relationship with him so that he can guide you so that you're prepared for the next open door a few questions I want you to think about as you're in this hallway or as you're approaching the next open door maybe there's an open door on the table for you right now and you're like am I supposed to do this or is this a distraction or like you know this these next seven points I'm gonna make are to help you identify if this next door is from God number one does it line up with scripture this is really good to write down if you're taking notes write this down so that you can go through this the next time you're about to make a decision does it line up with scripture Hebrews 4 12 tells us for the Word of God is living and powerful it is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it, it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of our heart number two is it an answer to prayer is it something that you've been praying for that now God has provided an open door for or is it just a random like just fall in your lap thing is it an answer to prayer mark 11 24 says therefore I say to you 
whatever things you ask when you pray and you believe that you receive them you have to have some faith when you pray you will have them number three has it been confirmed by wise counselors who is around you that is a good influence that is that believes in god but you know you can take it to them and they will pray about it and they'll let you know what they feel like god is saying if you don't have any wise counselors in your life i challenge you to join a team here at the church as we join teams we join in community with one another we have people that we can come through come to when we're going through something we have leaders that we can approach and say hey as my leader would you pray with me would you be there with me would you just help me hear from god before i make this decision that could change my life number four oh i'm sorry number three has it been confirmed by wise counselors proverbs 28 26 says he who trusts in his own heart is a fool this is the bible y'all this is the bible when you read it it's pretty good but whoever walks wisely will be delivered number four is it uncomfortable is this open door uncomfortable the bible tells us in john 15 2 that every branch in me that does not bear fruit you might have some bad relationships right now that are not bearing fruit every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away he cuts it back he cuts it off and every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it may bear more fruit is it uncomfortable number five is it causing you to rely on god if it's not causing you to rely on god if it's something you can do on your own that's a thought like is this something just so easy that you can do it or is it something you're like god i need you i'm stepping out in faith god i don't know how this is going to turn out is it causing you to rely on god psalms 18 2 says the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god my strength in whom i will trust my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold god wants us to depend on him you know i've heard a saying that says like god will never put more on you than you can handle i don't know if i really agree with that necessarily I think he puts enough on you for you to depend on him. You were never meant to do this on your own. You were meant to walk through life with God. He created you. You are his perfect creation. And you're not called to walk through it without him. Just like our kids aren't called to raise their self. Number six, does it bless others? Does this open door bless others? Or is it a self-seeking door? Is it something just for you? Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They will see what's happening in your life and they will say, God did that. It will bring glory to God. It won't be like praises to you, but it will bring glory to God. Number seven, does it bring peace? Does it bring peace or does it bring anxiety? Does it bring frustration? Does it bring out fights in your relationship? Does it cause you to just not even be able to sleep at night? If it doesn't give you peace, beware. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. plans of peace and not of evil good plans to give you a future and a hope you know something we haven't really mentioned throughout our talks of open doors is God's not the only one that opens doors God is not the only one that opens doors shocker I know but the devil also wants to throw some distraction doors in your path too he wants to confuse you the devil is the author of confusion and sometimes as we're walking and we approach an open door we're like you know this isn't really what i've been praying for but like this is a really good opportunity and the reality is maybe it's not a bad thing but it's not the thing that god called you to do it's not your purpose 
You're not going to achieve all the things that God has called you to do whenever you walk through this easier door. Would you guys stand with me? I want to share a story. As Eli and I began, we had heard a few years ago in our prayer time together that God said you guys would lead a life-giving church at a young age in Latin America. Somebody say Latin America. And Eli said, let's go to Frisco. Let's go, so, you know, let's go somewhere. Like, what about Lawton? We heard in that moment that Lawton was the place that God would have for us to reach our city. It would be a church that shakes the foundation of the city, that shakes the foundation of our state, that would in turn affect our nation. We're in the beginning stages of that. You guys are a part of something that God has such a great plan for. And as we come together, God is about to do some amazing things. We've already seen some amazing things, but this is just the beginning. But back in November, we were walking through the season of meeting in our home, preparing for the launch of the church. And can I tell you, I know this is really stout and this might sound intense for some of you guys, but I've said it to Eli like this. I truly believe it was harder in this season of launching the church than this season of losing a baby. It's hard. It's hard. What you're going through right now, it's hard. Your spouse might not even know what it is that you're struggling with. It's hard. But back in November, Eli received a, a message from a staffing, a church staffing company, and he's he received it and he was reading it to me. And it says, Hey, this is uh, so and so from Union Church in Baltimore. Pastor Stephen Chandler wants to know if you will come out and um, pastor our dream team. We need somebody that just pastors the serve team. And uh, this is the pay. This is all the things. And I was like, you know, at this point, it's looking real appealing. I'm like, your girl could be a stay-at-home mom. Can I get an amen from the ladies? Yeah, let's go. Okay. It's not a bad job it's not a bad position it's not a bad thing that's gonna take me to hell right but I knew what we'd been praying for we'd been praying that God would open up doors for the church to launch in Lawton and immediately Eli and I knew when we read the message as much as I wanted to entertain the thought of potentially moving to Baltimore and being a part of Union that that's not the plan that God had for us. But it would have been easier. It was more appealing. All we would have to do was pastor the dream team. They had a whole team already in place to do all the things. We could have tunnel vision and just focus on one area of the church. But because we know what we had been praying for, because we knew what God had set in front of us, said, this is the church that you're going to lead in Lawton. We immediately knew. We had to tell them, you know, we're in the season of planting a church in Lawton. As much as we love and believe what you're doing in Baltimore and the surrounding states, God's called us to stay here. There might be some distraction doors in front of you right now, and you might actually be considering them. I challenge you to go through those seven points. Is this something you've been praying for? Does it bring peace? Does it bless others? Is this your purpose? Is this what God created you for? The season of planting a church was so hard. So hard. I had no idea that it would be as hard as it was on our marriage 
on our kids, on friendship. I had a friend tell me, she said, Sheridan, she said, I, I want to challenge you. She said, whenever you pray, because we were praying, God opened some doors. Do what only you can do. God opened some doors. She said, you should pray that if this open door isn't from God, that he'll slam your fingers in the door. I said, too easy. I'll pray that. So I started praying it. Can I tell you that some doors were slammed on my fingers and your girl's hand was hurting come January 20th. God slammed doors and we tried to go back and be like, hey, you know, you wrote this contract. You have this commitment. You need to open the doors back up to us. Not budging. Not taking our phone calls. Calling all kind of places to see if we can launch there. But our fingers have been slammed in the door. That told us that God said, no, this is a distraction door. You need to be praying right now that God will slam your fingers in the doors that are not opened by him. That way you know that you know that this is what God has put me here for. That is the door I'm approaching because it was opened by God. And the Bible tells us that whatever door God opens, no man can shut it. Needless to say, we let Union know, you know, we're staying here. We love you. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, I don't know who you need to let know. But thank you for the opportunity. But God's called me to something even greater. We could have made a difference at Union Church. But we're called to shake the nation from Lawton. God is calling you to shake your home. He wants you to shake your workplace. You are there for a purpose on purpose. Wake up and see your purpose. It's not an accident. If everybody would close your eyes and bow your heads. Lord, I just thank you. God, I thank you for who you are in our life. God, I thank you that you open doors for us, God. Lord, I thank you that today, as we open up our hearts, God, to allow you to slam our fingers in some doors, as we allow you, God, into our life, God, we love you, God. We know that you are a gentleman. God, that you will not force us to do anything. You will not force us into our purpose, God, but you will lead us there, God, and you will encourage us and you will wise counsel us. God, I pray that you put people around them, each and every one of them. I pray you'll put people around them and in their life, God, that will be wise counsel, that will encourage them in the direction that your word calls us to go. Lord, I pray any confusion that they have in this hallway that they're in or approaching an open door, God, I pray that you'll remove all confusion. I pray that you'll bring peace to it. I pray that you'll bring clarity to them in their hearts, God. I pray that as you open up doors and you close other doors, they will know exactly what their purpose is from you. In Jesus' name, amen.